Do you ever feel like you have so much to do in a day that you can't possibly get everything done? Between work, taking care of the kids, cleaning the house, folding the laundry, cooking dinner, all of the things that we moms have to do on a daily basis, it can get overwhelming. We want to have time to read God's word. We want to have time to play with our kids and make memories. And we want to have time to ourselves to pursue our hobbies or just have a little bit of time to rest. But where do we find the time? Well, my name is Brittany Ann. I'm the owner of EquippingGodlyWomen.com and author of the brand new book, Fall in Love with God's Word, Practical Strategies for Busy Women, where I help Christian women find the time to read God's Word regularly and actually enjoy that time in God's Word. And today I want to walk you through one of the exercises I share in the companion workbook to fall in love with God's Word, and that is how you can schedule your priorities with this worksheet. Now, this is an exercise that I have done myself for a few years now, and let me tell you, it is so helpful. When I get crystal clear on exactly what my priorities are, and I make sure that I have time in the day to spend time on each of them, then I really do have time every day to make sure that all of my priorities get at least a little bit of time and attention. Now, I wanna be clear, this doesn't mean that I do absolutely everything in the entire world every single day. There are still things that I would love to do. I would love to run more than I do right now. I used to scrapbook. I want to catch up on that. I would love to learn how to play piano. I want to eat healthier. There's always going to be more things that all of us want to do in a day. That's just life because we're human and we only have 24 hours. And when we get online, we see so many amazing other women who are doing all of these things. It's natural to want to do them too. But it's okay to accept our limitations that there are only so many things we can do in a day. But once we know that, we can make sure that we prioritize the things that are most important to us and always have time for those things, even if we don't have time for all of the other things that we want to do. When we prioritize these are the things that matter most to me, then I can make sure that I do those. But it also gives me the permission to say, okay, these are number one, two, three, four, five. These are the things that matter but these are the things that don't matter. I can also say, okay, this is something I would like to do, but it's priority number six. It's priority number seven. So in today's video, I'm going to walk you through this process. It's very quick. It's very easy, but it's going to bring you so much clarity as you figure out, okay, I do have time for all of the things that are most important to me. I'm not going to do everything, but all of these things that matter to me, we're going to make sure you have time to do all of that. So grab your worksheet, and we'll get started. If you are watching this on YouTube, you can go right down to the show notes below and you will find a link to a blog post article where you can download this worksheet for free. If you're already in the blog post, you just scroll down a little bit and there will be a box where you can enter your name and email and I will send it right to you so that you can print it out and do this exercise with us today. All right, once you have your worksheet, print it out. Let's walk through how to fill this out together. So the first thing I want you to do is notice there are six lines at the top. I want you to think through your life, whatever season of life you are in right now, whether you still have little children at home, whether your children are all grown up and gone, whether you are working full time, you're not working, you're volunteering, whatever it is that you have in your life right now. And I want you to choose between three to five-ish, this is a ballpark number, choose between three to five things that are the most important to you in your life. Now this is an idealized list. This is not this is what I'm doing right now. This is if you get to choose and you do, these are the three to five things that you are choosing right now. This is what matters to me. I want you to choose them and I want you to rank them one, two, three, four, five. There cannot be any ties. You need to rank them in order of this is what is most important to me. So for example, when I do this list myself for my entire life, I am always going to say number one is my faith. My faith is always going to be my top priority. That is the thing that I want as the number one priority of my life. Even if nothing else gets done in a day, I want to make sure that my faith has some time. Secondly, my marriage is another huge priority in my life. Even if I don't get the house clean, even if I don't get to go for a run or anything else I wanna do, I wanna make sure that my marriage is solid and that my husband gets some time and attention. Thirdly, my parenting, I am in a season of life where I have three littles right now. They still need time and attention from me every single day. Now this will be different later in my life, but for right now, my kids still need a lot of time and attention and I want to be there for them to give that to them. So this is my number three priority. 
Number four is my work here at Equipping Godly Women. This is my job and I love it. I'm so passionate about being able to show up for you every day to challenge, encourage, and equip you to be all in in faith and family. This is something that is so important to me. It's not more important than my own faith. Personally, I would never want to let my own faith slide so that I could help you as well. That wouldn't be appropriate. And it's not more important than my marriage. I wouldn't want to stress out my marriage so that I could give you marriage advice or stress out my parenting so I could give you parenting advice. But it is number four. It's very important to me, but not more important than my own family. And then number five is my health. This could theoretically be higher, but it is something that's very important to me as well. Now I want you to take a minute to determine what your top priorities are for yourself. Now, there are a couple of ways you could do this. You could think about for your entire life, like these are the big things for your entire life. This is what is important to you. You can also take it on a more seasonal level and say, okay, in this season, this is what is most important to me right now. So for example, here's what that looks like in my life. When my children are home for the summer, they are going to be a bigger priority because they're going to need more time and attention. They are home with me. I am with them all day. I want to be there for them. However, when when they are in school during the school year, they need a lot less time and attention because they're gone for several hours during the day. So when my children are at school, I can make my work a more of a priority. Now, it doesn't mean that it's more important than they are, but different seasons call for different schedules. So I just want you to think about, okay, what is your season that you're in right now? Are you in a season when you are homeschooling? Are you in a season when you really need to make your health a priority? Are you in a season when you are working a lot? This might change in five years, 10 years. It might change six months from now. But right now, what do you really need to prioritize? What is so important to you that you really want to focus on these things right now? And once you have your three to five things, go ahead and write them with numbers on the six lines on the top. You will have an extra space, that's totally fine. You may have a couple extra spaces, but I do not, under any circumstances, once you're writing more than six things, I would recommend stopping with five. So go ahead and pick what your top priorities are in this season, the things that you say right now in the season of life that I am in right now, these are the things that I want to prioritize. These are the things that are so important to me. Can we take a minute to just celebrate what you just did? In a world when so many people just go through the motions, what's right in front of me, what's need to be done, you've taken the time to determine these are the things that matter to me. These are my five priorities or three or six, whatever you came up with. These are the things that matter to me. Out of all of the things that I could do in a day, these are the things that I want to make sure that fill my life. Now, once you've written these on your paper, I want you to look at your list. Notice what things didn't make your list. What things have you been trying to do and wanting to do, but they're not on your top five. These are just important to understand and realize and think about as your top five. Because in today's culture, when it's so easy to get on Facebook and Instagram and see all of these amazing women doing all of these amazing things and feel like, oh, I should be doing this. Oh, I should be doing this. I should be doing all of the things. I totally feel like this all of the time. But now that you've determined these are the things that matter to me, then you can give yourself permission to let some of these other things go. Yes, I would love to have a perfectly clean house. Is it on my top five? It's not on my top five. So if it gets done, that's great. If it doesn't get done, that's okay. I would love to, you know, do catch up on my scrapbooking. I would love to learn to play piano. Is it on my top five? It's not on my top five. I will, you know, maybe practice a little here and there, do what I can, but if it doesn't get done, that's okay, because I'm gonna focus on these are my top five. If some other mom is homeschooling, if some other mom is making organic chicken nuggets, if some other mom is involved in PTA and all of the things, we are gonna cheer her on and we are gonna say, good for you, like, yes, that is awesome. But these are my top five. These are the things that I care about that I want to make time for. So now that we are a little more clear on these are the things that matter to you, and these are the things that don't matter to you, let's figure out how we can have time for all of them in your schedule. I'll walk you through how I fill out my priorities worksheet and you can fill out yours as well as we go along. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to list some times in the first column on the left. And there are a few ways that you can do this. So if you are someone who is very busy and you need to have your day very strictly scheduled with these are the exact times that I do these exact things, then I would encourage you to add hours on the clock in that left-hand column. 
So for example, six o'clock, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, all the way down, whatever that looks like for you. They don't always have to be the same. You could go six, eight, nine, however that looks like, but you can start one way by adding hours on the clock. Second idea is you can add time blocks. So rather than just saying every single hour, it could be every two hours or every three hours. That way you give yourself a little bit more flexibility to say, okay, between eight to 10 AM, I'm going to do these kinds of things between five to 6 PM. I'm going to do these kinds of things. And again, they do not have to all be equal, but just kind of divide your day up how it naturally divides up on its own. And then the third thing that you can do is use very large blocks of time, such as early morning, mid morning, afternoon, so that you have a lot of flexibility if it doesn't matter exactly when you get things done, but you just know this is something that I would do during the morning time, this is something I would do during the evening time. So depending on which season of life you are in right now, how busy you are, if you like a schedule, if you don't like a schedule, start by putting some times on the left hand column. I'm going to use the middle option here and include some time blocks. So I generally work on things for more than an hour at a time. I don't schedule my day for every exact hour. I just have a block of time for each of my activities. So I'm just going to fill this out with some loose blocks on the left. Once you have your times filled in, now this is when we jump back up to figuring out what were your priorities in order. So the first thing I want you to do is if there are any things on your schedule that absolutely cannot change or you are unwilling to change them, like this is when this happens, I cannot get out of it, go ahead and add those on your schedule first because it's not going to help you to say, oh, I would love to do this at 3 p.m. when you already have a time commitment at 3 p.m. So if it is something like you need to go pick up your children from school and it takes an hour because you have a long drive, okay, that's not going to change add that on your calendar. Or if you work all day long and you say, I'm not going to quit my job, I can't just go leave my job and do something else, add that on your calendar as well. Anything that you say, this is not going to change, this is when this has to happen, we'll just put those in first so that they're out of the way. And then I want you to go through each of your top priorities in order, all three to five of them, starting with number one and figuring out where do these fit on your schedule. We're going to start with number one because you have decided this is the most important thing that you do in a day. So right now, your day is pretty much wide open and nothing has been filled in yet unless maybe you are at work during the day, that's fine, but you should still have several hours left. So starting with number one, your number one priority, when is a good time that you will fill this in? It's the most important thing, it's getting first priority, it's getting the first slot, where does this fit? So for me, my faith is my number one priority and where that fits on my calendar is Sunday mornings we go to church. So I'm not going to be scheduling anything else during that time because this is what we do at this time. Also, I want to make sure that I'm reading my Bible every day. This is really important to me. So through some trial and error, and I share a lot about this in my book, Fall in Love with God's Word, I have found that the best time for me to read my Bible is eight in the morning. So I'm going to mark that on my calendar right now. 8 a.m., I'm gonna write it right on here and draw a line across. So now I know I have set that time aside. There is time now for this priority. This is when this happens. So no matter what else happens in a day, this is when this goes. I will have time, I've set it aside in advance. And then we'll move on after we've done priority number one to priority number two. So for me, the number two priority is my marriage. So when does this happen? For me, I'm not gonna be able to spend time with my husband in the middle of the day when he's at work or first thing in the morning when he hasn't woken up yet. He tends to sleep in a little bit later than I do. That's totally fine. When can I spend time with him? When would be a good time for us? So in our family, for me and my husband, the best time for us to spend time together is in the evenings after the kids have gone to bed. During the day, we're both working and then the kids are home and they're little and they're loud and they're adorable, but they're loud. So for us, we have found the best time for us to spend time together is in the evenings. So I'm gonna write that on my schedule, draw a line straight across, this is reserved for this. Now, this doesn't mean that I have to spend time with him every single day. If there are days when he has other plans or I have other plans, that's okay. This is not set in stone, but I have that time set aside. I have set this time aside so I am available that we can do this thing. I'm not going to say, oh, I have no time for you. We can't possibly. 
no, I have this time. I've set it aside in advance. And I'm going to go through and do the same thing with each of my next priorities. Number three, for my parenting, when do my kids need my time and attention? So for me, this is first thing in the morning. I'm the one who wakes them up and helps them eat their breakfast and do all the things, you know, make sure that we run through the whole checklist of everything we need so that I can take them to school. So that takes a portion of my mornings. Um, and I love to do that. And so that is something that needs to be on my calendar. I am not going to do work meetings. I'm not going to, you know, run to the store or anything else during this time, because this is the time that I have found that I am with my children. So that is set aside on my calendar. The same thing in the afternoon. And this is the time that I pick up the kids from school and we spend time together. I help them get their snacks after school and make sure they get their homework done and all their stuff put away. And I need to be available to them. Now, that doesn't mean that I only hang out with them like straight for this time. I might be doing other things, but this time is available on my calendar. If they need something, I am available to them. If they don't need anything, you know, I'll probably go clean something because why not? But it is available to them. I am here. I am available. Next up, my work at Equipping Godly Women. I work here during the day when my kids are in school. So this one gets a huge chunk, even though it's not my number one priority. And it doesn't have to be a matter of your number one priority gets the most time, your number five gets the least. It's how much time does it reasonably require. So for me, I typically work when my kids are at school. That is the time I have set aside. This is what I do. Now, there might be times when I don't use this time. There might be times when I have to work a little bit extra and that's fine, but I've set this time aside. And then lastly, for my health, when is a time that I can go for a run or do whatever I need to do that helps me to be healthy? And again, this isn't going to take over my time other places, but I can find a time on my schedule that I can say, okay, this is when I'm going to pencil it in. This is the time I'm going to set aside. This is when it's going to happen so that I know, okay, Saturday afternoons or Sunday afternoons, this is a time that is a good time for me. I have this time set aside. I don't get caught up doing other things. I'm not, oh no, I spent the entire day cleaning the house and now I can't. No, I set this time aside. I've decided this is when I'm going to do this thing. And lastly, if you have a sixth thing, the reason that there is a sixth blank, not just because it makes the sheet look prettier, but because there are also things that we do on a daily basis that aren't necessarily priorities, but they need to get done. So for example, for me, cleaning the house. This isn't something where I'm obsessive about, oh, I have to have a clean house, but I do kind of like having a clean house and I do spend a lot of time each day cleaning. So there are still things that you're going to have to do each day, whether that's cleaning the house, folding the laundry, going to the grocery store. If there are things that take up a lot of your day that you you can't get out of, who don't want to get out of, just things that need to get done, even if you're saying, you know, this isn't necessarily my favorite thing, my top priority, but it needs to get done. Okay, what are those things? You can create time for them on your calendar too, just to be realistic. Now, at this point, you notice that there are several blanks that are left over. There are times when I don't have anything scheduled, and that is perfect and wonderful and great because there's always things that are going to happen. The dog might create a mess. The kids might tell you at the last minute, oh, I need poster board for school tomorrow or something might break, something might come up. So it's great to have this extra time and space and this margin so that you can either say, oh, I have some extra time. I'll pursue some other priorities. Some, you know, maybe it's number five six on my list, maybe it's number seven. It's not a huge priority, but you know, I have this extra time. Sure, I can use it for this. Or you just say, hey, maybe I'm gonna rest during this time or catch up. Maybe you're running a little bit behind. It's great to have that margin available if you need it. All right, at this point, you should have your schedule, your priorities worksheet all the way filled out as many boxes as you intend to fill out and there may be some extras and that's great. But you should have it filled out with some kind of idea. So look over your schedule. You can see now how there is time in a day to do each of these things. And if you're in a season of life right now where you say, you know, I still don't know, like I'm out of boxes. Okay, maybe you're just in a busy season of life right now. Maybe you have things going on that take a lot of time and attention and you just realistically have less time. You may have to decide to let some of your priorities go. You may decide you need more help. You may have to figure out a way to multitask or some kind of way to fit it all in. But the idea is that you would be able to see very comfortably, these are the things that can fit into my day. This is exactly where I'm going to make time for each of my priorities so that they get that time. And then even if you don't get everything done on your to-do list every day, and I 
hardly ever do, at least all of your things get some time and attention. So I will never give my kids enough hugs and kisses in a day. There are always more hugs and kisses and more stories and more things that I can do with them. There are always more walks we can take. There are always more games of Uno we could play, but I have that time set aside so that at least they get some time and attention from me each day. We're not gonna do all the things, but we're gonna do some things every day. And the same thing with work. There will always be more work tasks that I need to do. I will never get done with my list because by the time I've gotten near the bottom, I've added a hundred more things on it and that's just how I roll and that's fine. But I can look at my list of things that I want to do in a day and I can look and say, I have this much time to do it. What are my most important things that I need to get done during this time? And then make sure the most important things get done during that time and leave off the things that aren't on the list. And that's exactly what this is about. Just recognizing you're not ever going to do all of the things. I would love, trust me of anybody, I would love to do all of the things. I am a massive overachiever. I just want to do it all. But realistically, we are human. We have 24 hours in a day. So when you take the time to decide these are the things that I am deciding that matter to me, these are the things that are so important, these are my priorities, then you can make sure there's time for those on your calendar. Even if you are not going out and running a whole marathon today, okay, can you go run a mile? Can you make a little bit of progress in all of your areas? Even if you're not going to solve all of your marriage problems in one day and go on this huge, amazing cruise, okay, can you spend five minutes together? Can you spend an hour together just talking or watching a show? How can you carve out time in your schedule to say, these are the things that matter to me. I'm going to make time for them every day. And these are the things that don't matter to me. And if I don't get things done, that's okay. And this really helps me prioritize as well. When I feel like I really wanna do this thing, but I know it's a number six on my list. I need to focus on number one through five. Or I really wanna do this thing, it'd be so much fun. Okay, but realistically, it's a number seven. And am I going to sacrifice when my schedule says, this is a time I should be focusing on priority number two, but I really wanna do this thing that's a number seven? Well, I'm not gonna sacrifice a thing that's a higher number for me. So it just really helps you to clarify, this is what's important to me, we can let everything else go and make those decisions of today as you go about your day, rather than just who needs my attention, who needs what, what needs to be done, what's right in front of me, to be a little more intentional and to say, these are the things that I'm going to make sure that they get done. And when things don't get done, because something will always not get done, it's going to be a number six. It's going to be a number seven. It's not going to be a number one through five. So hopefully this has been helpful and encouraging to you, giving you something to think about. Um, I would love to hear from you. What are the things that you are prioritizing in this season? It may be different six months from now, maybe different 10 years from now, but this season that you are in right now, what are the things that you were deciding? What are your number one, two, three, four, five priorities in your life today? Leave me a comment and let me know. And then last but not least, if you found this helpful, I would highly encourage you go check out my book, Fall in Love with God's Word, Practical Strategies for Busy Women. It is so full of practical tips and encouragement just like this one to help you find the time you need to fall in love with God's Word. So you don't have to set it aside as something you wish you had time for, but you can have that time, you can enjoy that time, and you can really connect with God in a way you haven't been able to before. So go check that out as well.